how much um, did you get from the scholarship money? I think the seven thousand, which was highest, but since I'm staying in the school accommodation, mm -hmm. they removed about one five. Okay. And they also removed about seven hundred for canteen. Okay. I can't remember if there's any other thing they removed, but it was left with about two. The two installments came in as like two thousand three hundred euros okay. in mm -hmm. each. Yes, okay. so like four thousand six hundred thereabouts, and yes, it also covers tuition waiver. Yeah. Okay. I want you to share with us the application process for the regional scholarship, like what documents were okay. required, what particular um, regional scholarship is that? Okay, so um, the regional scholarship is also known as the income-based scholarship. So it's meant to be that um, based on your family's finance, mm -hmm. like from I think two years before, the year before, so you mm -hmm. have to state that. So you have to provide the financial statement. And in addition to that, you also declare if you have any landed property. It's just mm -hmm. for them to like um, define your work financially. So based on that, they will now assign how much you will be receiving. So mm -hmm. I think there's a limit of about 12,000 euros. So if your family's income it's not up to 12,000 euros or so. You are eligible to apply for it. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. you're eligible to apply for it. And so you just, the application usually opens around July or mm -hmm. so. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you just have to get a sworn affidavit from the high courts in your maybe local area or so, mm -hmm. then stating how much you, you list out the... Um, list of family members, whoever is working, who is not working, how much I like is your word. It doesn't necessarily have to be the amount that is entering or leaving your account. Because, mm -hmm. for example, you could be a businesswoman whereby someone sends about one million to your account, but your mm -hmm. profits on it is just about hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. So you can't okay. say because you have one million, it means you are worth one million. Definitely okay. not. Okay. So you have to just look for a way to <laughs> you have to look for a way to gauge and know exactly mm -hmm. what the financial stuff is. So that was what I did. So I had to like now when I was applying it was in twenty twenty two. So the document they require is the document of twenty twenty. So okay. mm -hmm. I had to get my elder sister and my dad's financial mm -hmm. statements because okay. my brother and my younger sisters were not working and I was also a student so okay. at that point so the, mm -hmm. it was my dad's and my elder sister's accounts I declared mm -hmm. at that okay. that point, yes mm -hmm. so the application would open around July then you would apply upload the documents then they will issue you something called an ISE I don't know yeah. if that's a full meaning it's the ISE you get then on your school portal your uni web that's your personal yeah. portal. You upload the essay and also fill in like more details. Then when yeah. it's time for the list to be released, when the, um, the list gets released, you just have to use your student ID to check mm -hmm. if your okay. name is on the list. So it's possible that you might not get the total money. For example, okay. during my time, it was about 7,000 euros that was released. Yes, okay. but from the 7,000 euros, if you were assigned accommodation, they will remove the money for accommodation. Mm -hmm. They would also remove money for you eating in the school canteen. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then afterwards, you'll be left with definitely less than the 7,000. Then you'll mm -hmm. be paid in two installments. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for you to get your second installment, you have to have cleared about 20 credits. 20 units, yes, 20 credits mm -hmm. for the courses. Mm -hmm. So for me, I cleared my 20 credits by February. So okay. when they were about to be paid, I got my money. <laughs> I got my money. So and I think also for the regional scholarship, you get paid your enrollment fee because when you're applying, you have to pay like an enrollment fee to secure your admission with the mm -hmm. university. So mm -hmm. after, I think... I can't remember when exactly I got paid. I just saw the money. I was like, oh, what money is this? So one of my colleagues was saying that, oh, it's your enrollment fee. They are paying you. But probably not the exact one, but at least about 10 euros less. So it's still mm -hmm. something. 
Yeah, sure. So some persons most likely will not get the full seven thousand. Not like yeah. even if you are getting the full seven thousand, it's not coming to you like cash directly. Yeah, yeah. Some would have been reduced, removed from each other to cover canteen money, to cover yeah. accommodation money like that. So I love that. Okay, okay. So like how much um did you get from the scholarship money? Okay, yes, how I much got award the award, seven thousand which okay. was like I think the seven thousand which was highest, but since I'm staying in the school accommodation, mm -hmm. they removed about one five. Okay. And they also removed about seven hundred for canteen. Okay. I can't remember if there's any other thing they removed, but it was left with about two the two installments came in as like two thousand three hundred euros okay. in mm -hmm. each. Yes, okay. so like four thousand six hundred there about, and yes, it also covers tuition waiver. Yeah. Okay, it covers like the, yes, the tuition was zero. Tuition, it was hundred percent like covered. The tuition was there for you. Yeah. <laughs> it was under, okay, but another thing about the regional scholarship is you have to apply every year, on mm -hmm. like the departmental or the Padova Excellence Scholarship. For the regional school, like, I don't know if it's like that for all universities, but you have to apply every year. So now I have to apply like in my second year. It's going to open by July again. So I have to present another financial statement yes. and apply. Yes. Okay. So we know you paid like zero on tuition. Yeah. And you were awarded like, you were awarded like 7,000, which is like actually I think the highest, like, yeah, you know, like the highest. Yeah, but yeah. you don't get the seven thousand like in full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't get it in full. Yeah, you just pay it in two like installments, and then yeah, and they must have removed some expenses from it. Then okay. the leftover is what you get. I know of some persons who said they got about four thousand or something, or three thousand. I don't know. It just depends on how. I don't really know how it's been calculated. And yeah. so your income statement too would also affect. Yeah. This. So basically when you present their family declaration documents, which they use to kind of like generate your easy parificato or easy equivalent since you're an international student, yes. it kind of like helps them to know like your need level. So exactly. If, uh -huh, if exactly. like the just like the base what you stated, if your family is actually kind of like earning like a bit more, then obviously they cannot give out much more money to True. you. True. Yeah. So some, True. someone is going to get four thousand, someone is going to get awarded five thousand. And there's, there was actually a past student that got awarded five thousand. Okay. So like if you were awarded seven thousand, like girl. <laughs> and you know, it was actually five thousand before. I think it was when I was about coming. It mm -hmm. increased, so I don't know if it works like that for all universities, mm -hmm. but it was five thousand year about before. Previously, yeah, yeah, it yeah, just yeah. increased this new session. Yeah, okay. yes. Seven thousand. That's good because the cost <laughs> of living is actually kind of like increasing. So it's yeah, it I think that was, that, yeah. Yes, that was the main reason. Yeah, that was the main reason. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, so as of now, when was the first um, amount released, and when was the second one released? Okay, um, the first amount for me was released around December, and okay. I think that was because I wasn't on the first list. Yeah, you know, I told you I couldn't get my student ID on mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. when the first list list came out, I couldn't like. Mm -hmm. I was in part, so I think it affected me. So I got my first amount around December, there about maybe mm -hmm. December 30th or 23rd. I can't even remember exactly when. So the second one came around February. Oh, yes. okay. Around February. February. Yes. That's, that's good. Okay. So, guys, I hope you guys have gotten the details like so far. So if um, the first instrument came in around December, when you came in, what was the living condition in Padova? How were you able to kind of like survive until the money was released? Do you think 
cost is really that much? How what's the cost of living in Padova? Okay, since um I got the university accommodation, it wasn't an issue with where to stay. Mm-hmm. So automatically, although I think I had to pay a deposit, and it's like that for any place outside the country, if you get accommodation, mm-hmm. you have to pay deposit. So mm-hmm. I paid the deposit before I left the UK, and so I was in the school hostel. So and they were not demanding money from me because. I'm sure maybe they have like it's linked somehow. Yes, yeah. although you still have to pay some amount every month because the one thousand five hundred they remove is not your total accommodation. I still had to pay like some little amount every okay. month, about almost forty euros every month. So, okay, which is fair enough. Mm-hmm. So um, I survived on my savings for like pending that I came around November third. So it's mm-hmm. more of like maybe within two months or a month and a half. half yeah. about. So, but basically it was just to feed, yes, and um, the transportation, that was the main thing. So when I came and I had like a Nigerian colleague around who was able to help me around. So it wasn't much of a big deal. So I did the abonamento. Abonamento is the transport. <laughs> Is a transport um, tickets, uh-huh. um, discounted price or something? Yes, yeah. so I did that for three months. For three months, and okay. It costs almost almost hundred euros. I think like ninety four. So, so uh-huh. I did that, and I think the major major expenses I had were the abonamento and the. I went to the post office for health insurance and. Kestura, I'm trying to Kestura. remember. Um, I knew I paid for health insurance and I paid for immigration something. Okay. So those were like the major expenses. Okay. Did you pay anything for the issuance of your student document? Issuance of student document? Like, you know, you know, the Questura, the, perm- the various permits, like your student permit. When you were requesting for it, did you kind of like pay anything at at all yes yes when i i went you know when you first come you Mm -hmm. have to do pay for insurance for a year i did that and there's also an amount about 150 euros that i paid to the post office Mm -hmm. it's you would get the payment slip then when you're about i think it's for the biometrics really yes because yes that's the money it's for biometrics so i just even did my biometrics like last week since i came Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, it's so it's not that easy here in Padova. So it's for the biometrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what the one fifty. So those were like the major expenses. And I I spent on feeding, but feeding is not all that much expensive. Much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had some things I brought from the UK to help me. In fact, I packed you. <laughs> <laughs> I met you, I kept it in the freezer, you know, because the UK to Italy is just like two hours. Mm-hmm. Even though I slept over at the airport, but it was frozen and I wrapped it using a cling film, kept mm-hmm. it in my box, like the mm-hmm. one that would be like, um, what is it called? In the box, sha. Yeah. So I kept it in the box. I stayed in the airport like overnight till the next morning. My flight was around nine. So I got to Italy like almost in the evening, but it was still intact in a way. So at least I had stew because I felt like I brought my pot too from the UK. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, what is the point leaving them over when I know I'm still going to continue my student lifestyle? So I just had to like excuse the money out to pay for extra luggage allowance while mm-hmm. I was living from the UK. So at least feeding wasn't all that hard and i mm-hmm. felt like even if i wasn't having the money mm-hmm. i had like some nigerian colleagues who would have been willing to help so okay. that's one thing so if you have someone around you it's really really a big plus for you really 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 a big plus yes. that's, that's <laughs> really good that's actually true because um it's good that you considered where your friend was so mm-hmm. you kind of like had information exactly. you know you, you can rely on someone true. when you kind of like need help true. and all of that. True. And that's actually really, really true. And when you got in, you kind of like, did you have to get, because before you can get the scholarship funds, you need to be able to 
get a bank account you need to oh yeah bank account. yeah exactly um as god will have it i was able to secure because there's this your student card is also a flash card whereby it has like uh this chip attached to it just like you can use it as like an atm card to, to withdraw money like it has an well you have to go to the bank to activate it Okay. So when I got my student card, I went to the bank to activate it. So afterwards, before it was time to get my first payment, I was able to put my bank details on my portal. So that was it. But even though I am unable to do that, I had a Revolut account which could also suffice like okay. for that. But I was able to use the Italian account, the one okay. attached to my student ID card. Ah, uh, okay. How was the process like applying? It wasn't hard Opening because you know when house. you come and you have enrolled, if you have enrolled as a student, you will get the message that your student card is now available. You have to pick it up. So I think I got that information even before I left the UK. So okay. when I came, I just had to book an appointment to get yeah. the flashcard. So after yeah. getting the flashcard, um, you know, the colleagues, that's why it's good to have someone around. So they exactly. will tell you what to do, that you just have to go to the bank. So I walked into the bank and funny thing is I was meant to, the person I first met said that, oh, that they have so many blah, 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 that I have to book an appointment first and the next appointment is to like December or maybe January, except I will go to the um, to the branch in the city center this and this. So while I was still there trying to understand what he's saying because, you know, the English and all, a woman came, so he paused, trying to communicate with a woman. Then afterwards, he just told me that, yes, my colleague is going to help you. So I did not even have to book an appointment. I just got the flashcard activated that same day. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I got it activated that same day. So it's just like some bank procedures where you have to sign and sign again, blah, 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 all those things. Mm -hmm. so nothing, no much paperwork, just mm -hmm. um, electronic, blah, blah, blah. That was it on the minimum was the like maybe the daily cost of living like for feeding or anything in Padova? I don't know if it's if it's possible to calculate it daily. I could okay. say weekly. Monthly. Okay, weekly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I have not really been doing budgeting and calculating <laughs> everything together. I know some persons are really so detailed okay. about things like that. So um you know I buy my stuff in bulk. Mm -hmm. maybe not book because i could probably buy like now the rice i have i bought it since i came last year and it has not finished just five kg i'm the only one eating it so mm -hmm. <laughs> so i could i i have the rice so definitely the rice i bought then was around eight euros or so so mm -hmm. there's no way i can calculate that one sorry so, weekly sorry yeah. then i could buy spark and just even if i wouldn't eat it now just buy and keep, you know, all of those things. So maybe when I go for, like, main shopping, on average, if I'm not, like, restocking, restocking a lot of things, mm -hmm. and you don't even have to wait till everything is empty, you could mm -hmm. need salt and just buy salt random. Mm -hmm. You could yeah. need um, fruit juice and just buy fruit juice like that. Oh, so yeah. I could spend, like, maybe 15 euros in a week. Most times mm -hmm. I shop on Sunday. Yeah, oh, okay. From church, I just branch the African store and mm -hmm. buy a few things, and that's minimum. Minimum could be like 15 euros, depending on if you're not just buying things like in bits. So, for example, mm -hmm. you might have pepe and you just mm -hmm. need meat, so definitely you can spend up to 15 euros, or maybe okay. you have things available, you just need bread. Mm -hmm. You can spend yeah. like two euros for bread, depending yeah. on the size, okay. yeah, like that. Yeah. So, but if you have to say in a month, mm -hmm. If you are someone that do not, you don't hit a lot, I so mean like 100 euros or even less than that that's for eating. Yes, less than yes. that for eating. That's because what am I eating? Except you are, you are eating house all the time, buying pizza, oh. buying kebab, all of those things. You spend a lot. Or if it's just you cooking yourself, mm -hmm. 100 euros is enough for you. Enough. You might not okay. spend up to that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what would you kind of like tell like other students that are coming in, like regarding lower lowering their cost of living, regarding eating and all of that? What okay, do you think um, is the hack? 
Yeah, eating out will definitely consume your money, even yes. if wherever the country is, even if it's Nigeria, even if it is UK, even if it is Italy, if you are eating out, you are going to spend a lot of money. So cook your food and, you know, try to... It's just that um, my university does not have a microwave. If not, I probably would have been taken out of my food and taken to school to microwave. But when I first came, I had to spend money because my um, canteen stuff wasn't activated yet because I okay. didn't get my scholarship money early. So it took a while to like this year, January or so, before I got my canteen stuff activated. So mm -hmm. once in a while, I would have to spend like five euros to eat. But sometimes mm -hmm. I try to just take biscuits from home and, you know, okay. eat. So if you are not a regional scholarship student, that could be an issue. So if you have bread, just take bread. No, I'm not saying you should not buy food from the canteen. Once in a while, you can and at least, you know, to eat, which I did then. But if you're a regional scholarship student, it's good for you because you just eat from home in the morning. Or if you're like me, you don't eat, then go to school and eat in the afternoon. Then when you come back, find something else to eat. So not like I don't buy stuff outside. I do, but not all the time. So mm -hmm. it's possible that in a week, I'm not buying anything from like outside. But sometimes mm -hmm. you want to treat yourself, then buy kebab. Or buy pizza. I love that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. How is making friends in Padova? How is it like? I don't want to say I'm a boring person. <laughs> but uh, I most likely would stay in those for like, I really don't, I would be fine if I don't have much presence around. No, like okay. if I don't mix with people, but I love it when I know that okay, they are there, but mm -hmm. I don't really have to like mix up. But good, the good thing is that I had Nigerians mm -hmm. around me, so I had two Nigerian colleagues that were here. My friend wasn't here because you know the Erasmus thing took him yeah, okay. to uh, um, Germany, so okay. I had two Nigerians that I used to go visit them, and they were good thing is they were in my hostel. So mm -hmm. I would just go to their room and that was it. So relating with my classmates isn't all that bad. Yeah, but I most likely might not talk much in class, just be on my own. Good. But mm -hmm. I like we go to the canteen together, ask mm -hmm. questions if necessary. But mm -hmm. I rarely hang out. Sometimes they go to the bar, but I don't go to the bar, you know. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, they might just um, be out. But any little break I get, it's for me, it's just to stay indoors and rest, talk to my colleagues back home or my parents, my siblings. Yeah. And um, I most likely would go out if... Okay, yeah, I remember going out when I first came. That was in December because there was a Christmas stuff that was organized for Nigerians, so we had to go to Rome. That's like the only main, main, main thing I think I I kind of applied for. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really, so I haven't really explored around. The time I would have loved to go to Venice for the carnival, it happened to be when I was writing exams, so it, it wasn't possible for me to mm -hmm. go at that time. Yeah, but I probably will still try to go i kind of mix up with people in church so if there's any gathering i go for youth meetings i don't know if that's part of it <laughs> yeah so share with yeah. us where even you were able to find a church community in padova like mm -hmm. how, how was that share, share with us on that okay for me one of the things that I okay before i left nigeria and even before i left the uk i knew yeah. i consciously pretty good i got i need a church so <laughs> God helped me that when I was in the UK, I found a good church, which was okay for me. Mm -hmm. And when I first got to Italy, the Nigerians I met were attending a redeemed church. A redeemed mm -hmm. church is also like in Nigeria, one of the popular churches in Nigeria. Okay. But when I went there like twice, I really knew that I did not want to stay here. You know, I wanted something else. So I asked my colleague that, what other churches like did you find? So he mentioned like, okay, there's an evangelical church. There's also like um, one international Christian fellowship, but he hasn't attended the international Christian fellowship. But when I looked at the map, I was like, hmm, 
this is just like eight minutes walk or 11 minutes walk away from the train station it's even better than the reading because the reading is quite far from the train okay. station and because of me uh, my colleagues would have to use a taxi because they could cycle but i could not cycle uh, so it's okay. hard and it's kind of far from the train station so i was like i'm going to go to this church so i told my nigerian colleague within that let's try going to this church when i attended the first time i knew that i was going to be here so ever since i've been going there <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I i i do see you sharing about about them <laughs> i check them out hey yeah. guys i really love like, worship so it's, yeah it's the place is actually really good like really mm. good so if you happen to if you're an incoming student and you happen to be going to part of her like yeah. come to icf we welcome you <laughs> It's actually the place to belong. That's our motto. So <laughs> yeah, always welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will find time and come and visit like one one Sunday because <laughs> like yeah. What are some of the opportunities like Erasmus opportunities in Padova? You are allowed to do your second year, or even if it's yeah, I think from your second year actually in any university, not just any. There's usually a list of universities. In certain European countries, okay. so depending on your department, when the call is open, you will get information. They also organize webinars and trainings to like keep you informed. So if you are interested, you attend to ask questions and all of that. So you could do your first semester of your second year mm -hmm. in some of these universities and come back to Italy to do your thesis, or you could decide to wait there. And also do your thesis then okay if you're like oh i want to stay in italy you could do your first year in italy do your first semester of the second year in italy then for your thesis you could do like erasmus traineeship which is like an internship whereby okay. you maybe either an, an organization relating to your program or okay. a university so it's more of like an internship this time around not erasmus study program so mm -hmm you get paid for both actually so the traineeship is usually around i think six months or so is the maximum of 12 months but mm -hmm. if you are doing traineeship for your thesis it's different from when you are doing traineeship outside of thesis so it's possible okay. that you could do the traineeship in collaboration with your thesis or mm -hmm. you could say that okay I don't want to do my thesis now after my mm -hmm. first semester of second year. I want to go and do internship. So you mm -hmm. could just do the internship, but you are going to have like an extra year or extra semester to do your thesis. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So here in Italy, I don't know if it's like that for European countries. You could your program is two years, but it could extend to three years or more. It depends on you, really. You have wow. yes. And I know of persons who offer some second year courses in their first year just because they want to round this up early. Early, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about learning the Italian language. Do you think you can just go by, you can just get by with English in Padova? You can't get by with English in Padova. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to be frank. Yeah, it was a struggle, but I think that I had a Nigerian colleague. He was the one who was like, really helping me when I was around. If I were to have been left to my mom, I probably would have been crying every day because I would feel so lonely. And definitely it's not easy. You don't know what you're saying. You're in a strange place. And I just feel, I don't know how fast Italy is going to make English like a thing because you have to ask people before you talk to them. Do you speak English? Palais English, eh? even, <laughs> even before I even knew that it took a while. But one of the first things you need to learn when you're coming to Italy is non capisco Italiano. I don't understand Italian. So if the person is willing to speak in English, yes. that's good for you. So some of them know how to speak in English, but not. But if you're in the square environment, definitely mm -hmm. it's not a problem. But when you are outside, that's where the problem is. So. One of the ways I was able to cope, aside from the fact that I had someone who was following me for a while when I came, mm -hmm. was um, Google Translate. So you have to use Google Translate. Um, is it that you type, you type it in English, it translates to Italian, you show it to them. And when they are speaking, there's also the option of 
it's recording the audio yeah, yeah. and automatically yeah. translates for you. Yeah. So yeah. that's one thing. And I think one thing that it's 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 available in some Italian universities, but not just in mine. Um, I, I think it would help if um, Italian courses are made compulsory, like in the first three months or the first six months. I remember feeling that in one of the surveys they asked us to feel recently. So if the Italian language program or course is okay. made compulsory, I think it will help students because, but I know of people in Poland whereby um, you have to first study Poland, Poland Polish. Yeah, Polish. Before you start your yeah. master's program properly. But mm -hmm. there's nothing of such. Even if it is simultaneously hand in hand with your course, it still works. Works. But in my university, there's then later on I was able to do like a two weeks or is it nine days intensive Italian program, but definitely it's not even enough to make you a beginner or something. Mm -hmm. You know, but I know of other universities whereby they have Italian courses as compulsory for them mm -hmm. because I met some persons in room and they are studying mm -hmm. Italian, they have to write exams, you know, all of that compulsory. I know it could be hard, but mm -hmm. it's still better because it will help you you know, mix up, it will help you still stay comfortable. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the long run, you can mingle and even apply for jobs easily. You stand a chance of, you know, grabbing opportunities as they come. But yeah. when you can't even talk, yeah. um, when you can't communicate, how do you to go? But I'm surviving, but thank God. But are you, are you picking up? Yeah, I'm picking I up the kids. I would appreciate if there are like more courses that would I could take, but you know, school work too could be helpful. But if it's a composite, you know, you don't have if it's a composite course, you know, you don't have choice. Well, you you know, it's part part of your curriculum, it's part of your coursework, so yeah. you can do that. But I do the Duolingo stuff, which you really, yeah, I do that yeah. every day. And the fact that you have to maintain your daily streak, I know I miss sometimes, but for now, it's I'm still on track. So. Okay. So that helps too. Yeah. So yeah. I could see some words. I know what it means, but if they are speaking fast, I might not get. But when yeah. you pick one or two things, okay, this is what you're saying. You mm -hmm. might just know. And I think if if you know how to speak French, you most likely will learn the Italian language faster. Yes. So I knew a bit of French. I'm not a fluent speaker, but I knew that some words were similar. Buongiorno mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. good morning. Mm -hmm. Bonsoir mm -hmm. is um, bon sera or something. Bona sera. Yeah, bona sera, yes. <laughs> so some things are just palo speak is pal in French. So some things are really mm -hmm. similar. So if you are really mm -hmm. good with your French, so we have some African countries that the official language is um, French. So mm -hmm. if you are really good with your French, you might really not have a problem. Just with time, you will learn. Pick up. Yeah. So you want to, right? You want to pick up the language. Yeah, definitely. If I'll be staying here for a long time, I should. <laughs> Do you intend to? It's I actually find language interesting. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons I think I'm I'm able to stick with the Duolingo stuff. Mm. And just like I okay, if um I wasn't all that serious with my French in school, I most mm. likely would not even know there are similarities between Italian and yeah, yeah. French Thanks. language. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. So finally, what do you think are the students, you know, job opportunities in Padova? So okay. like, you want to know. Padova. So like, um, for me, I've really not been working. And I think one of the main thing is because of coursework. But if you can balance things well, you definitely can. And another vital, or the main, main thing is because you require the residence permit to work. But mm -hmm. I don't have. When I first came, I was able to do just one day job with um, an inventory company. Then they were still accepting visa when I applied. So okay. it's, I needed just my visa to apply then, which I did. But mm -hmm. because of it was, it fell in between my period of exam. I mm -hmm. could go for one day. So the main works are, I think they are cleaning jobs, but I haven't okay. explored that. Mm -hmm. And you could work but the main main work are inventory where you take um stock and you have to scan but this kind of job is seasonal 
So now after around December, January, that was the end. So some of them will start again by May. Then May, June, July, they will work. Okay. August, they will stop. Then maybe September through to December or January. Then uh -huh. from February to May, no job again. Or even uh -huh. if they have just a few, few jobs. So those like, and I think there are also some outsourcing agents that could also be available. Like now, a friend of mine told me about the group. I was added to the group. So uh -huh. then there's this um, kind of job whereby you serve food to primary school students. So, but that doesn't work with my schedule because I'm a student. And definitely okay. those children are also in school. So it's usually mm -hmm. around afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't do that kind of job, except you want to intentionally skip class for that day, which mm -hmm. is still fine for some persons, you understand? Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of jobs. And maybe, what else? Yeah, these are like the basic one. Except maybe you enter into a restaurant and tell them you're interested. I remember going to a McDonald's um, place to ask them, I was like, do I need to not to speak Italian? She said, no, that you just have to bring your CV. But mm -hmm. I ended up not going there because of, you know, schoolwork. And I felt like if I'll be working in McDonald's, I need to be dedicated. But I have classes Monday to Thursday. I'm free just on Fridays, Sundays and Sundays. And I feel like even the weekends are short because okay. <laughs> you want to rest and just lots of time. Maybe I'm just lazy. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, that's just it. So opportunities mainly inventory jobs and you know when you just come over and you meet other people they will definitely link you up in a way and explain mm -hmm. things better yeah. okay guys so you heard it from comfort she shared entire journey from the uk to italy and she's yeah. also shared with us like a, a scholarship she's you know <laughs> benefiting from at the moment and life in padova so, like, what are your final words to, like, any student coming from Nigeria, from Ghana, like, anywhere in Africa to either Padova or to come and study in Italy? Okay, I would say that if you are coming, just prepare your mind to work. And I even feel the whole process of scholarship or grad school application is for someone who is actually serious. If you are not willing to take responsibility, it's better you don't even try because the responsibility of you applying is nothing compared to the responsibility of maintaining your studentship. Although Italy is a bit lenient or my school with you having just the part, except you want to study for pass mark. I don't know mm -hmm. about others, but I, I don't think I'm okay settling for 18 or about 30, you know. Mm -hmm. So just prepare your mind that you have to take responsibility, but the truth is it's usually worth it in the end. So mm -hmm. I would say prepare your mind for responsibility. But it's nothing you cannot deal with. You can. If we have persons here that are surviving, definitely why can't you? Yeah. Okay, guys. So you heard from Comfort. And she has a YouTube channel. So drop your details. You can also follow her on Instagram. Drop your details for okay. those who are listening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, on YouTube, it's called Moments with Comfort. So, yeah, so you could just even type Comfort. Then you see it. And... Facebook, LinkedIn, I'm kind of active here yeah, on LinkedIn, on Instagram too, Comfort mm -hmm. Oladayo at Dick Bingo. So maybe you would keep that also in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put it in the description. Yeah, so you can just well. type my name, Comfort mm -hmm. Oladayo at Dick Bingo. It's going to bring it out. So you don't have to search for anything special, just my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. So that that is it for today's session. If you have like anything more you want um, Comfort and I to really talk about, any question regarding like living and studying in Italy, you can obviously leave it in the comment section of this video. And then whenever Comfort has a bit of time <laughs> from schoolwork, she's just going to join me for that session. I hope you guys found value in this video. I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs>